It was a dark winter night, and I wondered whether my business had gone south for the winter. It had been weeks since my last case. Things were starting to look bleak when suddenly... Madame Hemoglobin burst in, looking hysterical, dramatic, and French. Oh, Madame Inspector, aidez-moi! There's no need to be hysterical, Madame. Tell me, from the beginning, what happened? C'est mon amour, l'oxygène, he is gone. It is horrible, Madame, horrible. He had always had a strange relationship. He would come, he would go, but he would always come back to me. But not this time. When did he go missing? What were the circumstances of his disappearance? It all began when we went on vacation to the Alps, madame. Did he seem distant then? Oh oui, madame. As soon as we got there, he became distant towards me. He did not seem to want to associate with me. You must help me, madame. Well, madame, I don't usually deal in matters of the heart. But as business is slow, we'll take the case. Oh, merci, merci. Thank you so much, Madame Inspector. Thank you. I had dealt with hemoglobin in the past. She was a strange woman, sometimes very attracted to her beloved oxygen, while at other times they couldn't be more distant. When times were good, she and oxygen were nearly inseparable, but when things got rough, they were like complete strangers. They had met in the Café Lavoli and had great chemistry. It was slow at first, but once they got to know each other, they bonded and became inseparable. Until, because of Madame Hemoglobin's work, they had to travel. At the shores of Carpi Digitalis, they found each other separated. Distraught, Madame Hemoglobin returned to the country of Lung. There, she visited the Café Lavoli and was surprised to find, alone and pensive, her beloved Oxygen, sitting at the table where they had first met. She approached him, and their romance was rekindled. It was as if they had never separated. This happened with astonishing regularity. I could not understand, though, why on this occasion their romance had not picked up as it had in the past. Being no expert on the cultural eccentricities of Lingusians, I decided to call in a favour from an old friend. Come in. So, Dr. Harris, I was recently consulted by a rather distraught woman, uh, Madame Hemoglobin, and she is wondering why her beloved Oxygen doesn't want to associate with her anymore. I was wondering, could you maybe enlighten me on the uh, social, uh, maybe eccentricities of the Lingusian people? Ah, yes, the Lingusians. Very interesting culture. It's really not the association of oxygen with hemoglobin, but really the attractiveness of hemoglobin for the oxygen that might be the problem. Okay. You can think of it this way, where the attractiveness of oxygen to hemoglobin can be thought of as saturation. And that really is dependent on how much oxygen is around. When oxygen is absent, the attraction is very low. But when oxygen becomes present, the attraction becomes very high. Like this. Then, the attractiveness gets low again. So, when there's a lot of oxygen around in, say, the area of Lungusia, you would have very high saturations here. But when oxygen becomes absent, the saturation goes down, so the attractiveness goes down. The problem comes when there's competition. Carbon dioxide comes into the environment. The attractiveness of oxygen from the perspective of hemoglobin becomes low. We have a change in the dynamics of the system where as oxygen is present, hemoglobin is less attracted by the oxygen because of competition from carbon dioxide. I see. Well, this may help me resolve this case. Thank you very much for your time, Doctor. You're very welcome. Thank you. It seemed to me that some greater forces might be at work here something more complex than simple pH levels and CO2 concentrations. Maybe this Ulza character could give me the answers Harris could not. At the very least, I hoped that the voyage would be made worthwhile.
So, Louise, how is it exactly that altitude can affect the relationship between hemoglobin and oxygen? Esa es una pregunta muy interesante. That is a very interesting question. Well, to illustrate the answer a little, we could see the example of a duck. This duck lives in South America, between 0 and 4,000 meters. And something interesting that happens with it is that as altitude increases, the partial pressure of oxygen decreases. But in spite of that, we find the duck living in both environments, in the lowlands and in the highlands. What has happened so that this duck can live is that it has had to modify its hemoglobin. It has changed the structure of its hemoglobin so that it has a higher affinity for oxygen. So, what exactly are the ways that hemoglobin can change itself? Here we have a very interesting article by Dr. Kevin McCracken from the University of Alaska, where he studies various groups or various species of ducks in the Andes. He found that the genes for the different subunits of hemoglobin, alpha or beta, have changes in some nitrogenous bases that produce changes in the amino acids. So a change in one nitrogenous base, for example in the duck I was showing you just now, produced a change in an amino acid. This amino acid in the ducks that are at high altitude is serine. In comparison to the other ducks that live in low areas or the other species that have asparagine, as you can observe, this change has produced a change in the amino acid structure. We went from a short amino acid to a long one. And these changes in the hemoglobin can present themselves in different positions. If we look at the structure of hemoglobin, changes can originate in different parts of it. It's not just one change in the structure, but multiple ones that the hemoglobin must make to be more attracted to oxygen. Thank you very much for your time. This was most enlightening. The points made by Luis are valid, but there still seems to be something amiss. The clues, which at this point in the case should be aligning to form the unmistakable constellation of truth, were still confused, not falling into place. With questions still unanswered, I went to the archives, where I pored over volumes that, despite their novelty, were hung with the dust of neglect. When sickled hemoglobin deoxygenates in high concentrations, such as in blood, they stick together and form a gel-like substance. Sickolemia is when a portion of red blood cells sickle due to a decrease in the partial pressure of oxygen. When a person has sickle cell anemia, a greater portion of the cells sickle with a smaller decrease in partial pressure. The hemoglobin recovers from this sickled state when it associates with oxygen, but it has a significantly lower affinity for oxygen than normal hemoglobin. Sickolemia is often found in places where malaria is common due to the fact that malaria virus is unable to infect sickled cells, causing people with sickolemia to be resistant to malaria. Sickle cell is caused by sickling of hemoglobin due to a conformational change in the beta globin. This change comes from the replacement of the amino acid glutamic acid with the amino acid valine at position 6 in the beta globin subunit. Inspector Genome, I presume? Why, yes, that's me. A letter from Oxygen. Is there something I might be able to help you find today? No, actually. Everything I was looking for is right here. Thank you very much for your time. Um, sure. No problem. There I came to a final conclusion, and I realized that I needed to confront Madame Hemoglobin. Oh, Madame l'Inspecteur, have you found my amour l'oxygène?
Georges. Allez, tell me, s'il vous plaît. When you first came to me, I suspected that a cultural phenomenon might be the cause of your dear Oxygen's disappearance. I consulted a friend of mine who is an expert on the subject. However, I suspected that some other force may still be at play here. Remembering your mention of the Alps, I wondered whether the altitude had been the catalyst in your dear Oxygen's disappearance. I mentioned this to my friend, and he suggested that I talk to an expert, a friend of his, who is from the Peruvian Andes. I made the arduous trek to the Western Ridge, where he recounted to me the effects that high altitude might have on your relationship. You see, Oxygen does very poorly at high altitudes, and in order for you to retain his company, it becomes necessary to make certain accommodations on his behalf. Being a sensible woman, I, who has travelled there before, I would assume that you are aware of this and made the appropriate changes. And yet, something still didn't make sense. I went to the archives, and there I found the most intriguing treatise on sickle cell anemia. Since the sickling of cells is caused by the sickling of hemoglobin, and you mentioned no such occurrence, I concluded that this must not be the cause. It was there in the archives that I solved the case, Madam Hemoglobin. There was something you had neglected to tell me, and yet I was able to deduce what you had so awfully concealed. You, Madame Hemoglobin, were having an affair. Oh, Madame Inspector, it is true, I confess. It was carbon dioxide. I met him on the shores of Carpe Digitali, and he was irresistible pour moi. When I was with him, mon amour l'oxygen seemed so passé, and I neglected our love. But I did not know that he knew. Oh, mon Dieu, what have I done? Madame Hemoglobin, I believe not all may be lost. I suggest you return to the Café Avoli. There you may just find your dear Oxygen waiting for you. Oh, Madame Inspector! Merci, thank you very much. Merci. Love may come and go, but there's one thing we can always count on and it's the repetitiveness of biological processes.